Hey guys, it's Avenger, and welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at a terrain developer's first aircraft, the Terrainy Studios. Great name there, I actually quite like that one, witty. Uh, RV8. This is a Vans RV8 aircraft, of course, it's a tandem two seat single engine kit plane. Uh, it's aerobatic certified, and it is similar design to the earlier RV4, although it is larger. And it, it has conventional landing gear, okay, tail tracker. There's a RV8A version with trike landing gear. Now, typically the aircraft is capable of about 192 knots max speed, uh, cruises 180, can get a range of about 820 nautical miles at about 55% power, so there you go, can get to 22,000 feet, relatively impressive, and a rather impressive 1,900 feet a minute climb. So, what does this aircraft feature? Now we have four liveries here, not a lot, but fair enough. Uh, accurate flight model developed alongside real RV8 pilots. Realistic tail dragger behavior, we shall see. Full IFR capable cockpit. GPS options including the 430 from Asobo and the GTN 650, which is if you have the PMS 50, you can run that. We have working circuit breakers, kind of expected now. Dynamic interactable static objects with a little tablet to control those. We have dynamic fuel in the tanks with visible level. Does that affect performance of fuel sloshes? I'm not sure. We have in cockpit checklist, simulated dice creation on the surface of the engine. Again, that's a stock feature. 3D adjustable lighting in both interior and exterior. High res 4K textures. We have optimum performance and VR compatibility. Now, this is, I believe, 24 euros from Sim Market. So, without further ado, let's go take a look around. We'll go outside first for our customary. You know, I use the controller to be smoother and it ends up being just as derpy otherwise. Now, it doesn't support your custom numbers on the livery. Unfortunate, would have liked that. Uh, for essentially a very basic looking aircraft in the exterior, which the real ones are, it looks, I think, accurate. It feels a little short. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong here, but it feels a little shorter than it should be lengthwise. I may be incorrect, but something feels downscaled possibly compared to the pilot. Maybe it's the pilot scale. That could be something, but it feels compared to photographs slightly off to me. I'm not positive. You know, we've got the short stubby Vans wings, kind of typical of their aircraft. And of course we have our tandem seating here. Let's go inside the plane and take a look around, shall we? So as I try and work out how to put my controller down without hitting everything on the way down, we have the cockpit. Now, latching here to open the cockpit. Not really much sound when it's going back. That's unexpected for me. Overall, the aircraft sound levels are quite low, I found. Got our hot air entry, carb air. We have oh, a glove box, which doesn't do anything. But we get a pop-up over there for some reason. Now, it claims to have reasonable performance, but I'm getting a slight hit. And, oh, interesting. So the ammeter goes from naught to many. It's just a step. It doesn't swing. It just goes click. So the voltage moves up there. You see what I mean? The ammeter just bounces. That's unusual. So we have this starting up, of course. This is our PMS. Which, for some reason, is now not showing icons, but interesting. It looks blurry, too. I'm not sure why, but it appears blurry. We have kind of grainy reflections going on here in the sim. Now we've got our circuit breakers down here, which do work. We've got our controls down here. The various functions we will use. Parking brake is currently applied. There's the glove box. Now we have the tablet here, which just controls static elements. So we can put the pitot cover on, chocks, tie-downs. We can select the Asobo uh, GPS, which gives us a straight-up transponder, and the Asobo GPS, which does its job, to be fair. Oh, main page. There we go. Now we also have the PMS, which is what we'll be using, because it's much preferable. Simple autopilot here with an altitude selector. We have AP heading hold and altitude. It's not complicated, but it's a small aircraft. That would be, honestly, it's luxurious to have. Uh, that appears really untextured compared to the rest. And I'm not sure it looks 4K. Some parts do, some parts do not. Maybe it's more of a mapping thing. 
and coming from the world of flights and texture design, it can be really easy to go, oh, let's use 4K textures or let's 8K textures. Sure, but if you don't map the parts big on those pieces, it, it's not benefiting. You would be better to have 10 texture files at 1024 than one 4K texture file because the parts can be bigger, which means more detail. So just saying 4K is irrelevant. That doesn't mean it's high res. Like, we've got a gener generic kind of texture pattern coming that's been applied to these parts. You can see it's seaming there, and it repeats and goes around for some reason. It looks okay, but it's not insane. Now, down here we have a checklist for us to use, which is a regular kind of stock checklist for the RV8. Useful to have, actually. Nice little feature. And the GPS, if we want to put it away, we click the other little bag there, and it goes away. Now, speaking of uh, the items here, let's pop these open as well. Let's go back outside. I'll temporarily use my keyboard because I had to put my controller down and now I can't find it. But uh, we do actually have... See, I can't get the controller to move much smoother than this with the stick, so... I don't see fuel in there, it just looks like a hole. Oh, my eyes. Oh, God, yeah, let's not do that again. Okay, so I can't see fuel in, in the actual hole, but we have got things like baggage door. We have got things like tie-downs, chocks, which is, as described, relatively nice little features. Um, overall, the aircraft does have a good build to it. The modeling quality looks decent. Uh, we'll close it with the tablet for now. Take off all of these. and uh, will take off the tie-downs there. We'll put this away. Now, as you'll see down here, we have our battery alternator, we have avionics, fuel pumps, nav, beacon, landing, and pitot heat. Now, I'm going to turn it to night time to see what happens when we do this, because I haven't found a cockpit instrument light switch. Dark, apparently, is what happens. And there's apparently modifiable or customizable night lighting inside and out, which... Correct me if I'm wrong, should have a switch. The problem is, there's no manual in the folder for the aircraft, and nothing was installed with it. It comes via, at least in the, my case, the Sim Market installer, and I got no manual there, so. No. What do you do? It's a dial with no nothing on it. If I go to nighttime again, does it make it darker? Oh, that's our lighting. Completely unsignaled and with the missing tape on it. So we have got these. That's reasonable. It's basic, but it's functional. I'll give them that. Okay, let's go back to daytime here. Okay, without much further ado, let's get this thing started up and taken out for a ride. I forgot to start up my head tracking software beforehand, so you'll give me a moment here while I just adjust my brain. Um... Overall, so far, it's looking reasonable, but uh, for the price of 23 20, uh, $99.24, what happened to my brain? Okay, no, my head tracking software decided to commit Sudoku, which is always fantastic when that happens. You know, you, you just try and minimize something and off it goes. Bye. I'll just collapse on you. Are we going to open this time? We are going to open this time. Fantastic. Okay, so for this price, I would genuinely have expected to get the RV8A as well as the 9. Sim Work Studios released their 14. Check my... Some fuel flow. Are we going to start? Interesting. Oh, now we have fuel pressure. Left tank wasn't full. That's an unusual instance where the left tank isn't actually full of fuel. And we get a good start. Okay. So let's put this in and I will talk while we taxi out. Save us some time here. So visibility and view from the cockpit is very good. I quite like that. Um, Instrument panel is well laid out. Some things just seem a little bit strange occasionally. Um, but the jerkiness of the ammeter is one. 
Uh, battery seems to have discharged, of course, whilst using it, but very fast for how long we've been using it. Because that's below red, I shouldn't start. It always seems to end up down there. No matter how quickly you start the aircraft, the battery ends up under the red. In terms of voltage, which is kind of strange. Um, not sure if that's a bug or not, but it feels like it might be. Some of the bits and pieces seem quite strange as well. We'll see as we get going, though. As we taxi to the end of here, as Alam say in Austria. It's a decent little aircraft. But again, I would have expected for 24 euros, which is high on that price. Seeing as, again, Simworks released theirs for 15 or so, and it included both. It included the 14A uh, and regular. So that's kind of an expectation, really, considering it's a landing gear change and a different handling file. Um... You might have expected that. I, for this price, I would have expected that. I would have also expected a few more liveries. And from the name plates missing, from no uh, indicated manual. Again, not expected for this price. Are all our readings the same here? They are. Okay, let's taxi up the runway here. And having taken us for one spin already, the handling isn't terrible. But what does confuse slash confound me is that my RPM gauge... No, come on, behave yourself. It gets very nose down when it's actually on takeoff here. And it takes off quite easily, but it's got a good decent engine behind it. Um, look at where my RPM is. I'm at full throttle here. And I've tested at sea level and here at Zalamso, which is about... Uh, 3,000 feet. I'm still only just hitting the bottom of the green arc on the RPM. That seems low. Very low. I should be able... I mean, I could just run this wide open all day long, even from sea level, and it'll never max out. I can't approach 2,500 RPM. I can't even really approach 20... I'm at 2,200 limited, it seems. That's my max. So I'm just going to sit here wide open. Um... Let's see if we get any sound when we open the canopy. If I can reach that. Uh, oh. I can't actually click that. That's interesting. I can't actually open... Wait, I can't open any of these things. I can change that. I can't open any of those features, which is fair. You can, should be able to. But it seems that the canopy... Oh, I can put tie-downs on. Interesting. I can do tie-downs, but I can't do chocks or pitot covers, obviously. And I can't open the canopy in flight. That is... odd, to be honest. Canopy, I thought I'd want to be able to open in flight. Really would. That is unusual. Visibility is stunning. I'll give it that. For a little tandem one, you could feel like you're in a World War II fighter, which in real life is wonderful because obviously most people can't afford a warbird. We're sitting in a little single-seater in line with the passenger behind you. The engine cowling, looking out over the wing, confined little cockpit. Yeah, you feel like you're in a fighter. A lot of these are painted like old like Mustangs, but the width as well feels... It's obviously unrealistic to the real aircraft because in real aircraft it's much narrower. However, in real life, your eyes have a much bigger field of vision. So the width appearance of the cockpit here would feel about right because you're going to literally see more with your eyes. So making it 100% accurate is wrong. It would look strange. Oh, now I'm getting more RPM. I mean, the engine's warming up, so that's plausible, but not that plausible. Because I'm still sitting here wide open. Testing a theory right now. As I descend, my RPM goes up. Okay. Okay. Maybe more air going over the prop. It's spinning it, but that shouldn't be affected when it's powered. Okay, yeah, I go over red line when I do that. And I pitch up, and my prop's RPM goes down. That seems odd. That seems weird. Is that weird? I... I must be having one of those brain moments because I don't ever recall seeing that in a plane before. 
that my pitch dictates my RPM. That... Uh, am I being special here? Am I forgetting some core aviators knowledge that I should really know? It would be embarrassing not to that diving increases my prop speed, which is possible. You're passing more air more quickly, so yes, you're going faster, it'll spin faster. You're going slower, it'll spin slower, but either that's great that they've included it, but I've never noticed it before on the same aircraft. So the whiskey compass, I believe, is turning the correct way. Yeah, it appears to match up, okay. Okay. I don't know why, but I get this nagging feeling that something's off. The RPM seems to be behaving strangely, that's for sure. Fuel pressure looks good. Is my fuel boost pump still on? Fuel level still sitting there. Fuel pressure still looks good. EGT flies down there with throttle, which is accurate. Everything else is moving. The voltage has gone back to full. Okay, so that's good. So it was discharging, perhaps a little too quickly, but it is refilled to what would be expected with the alternator running. The ammeter was definitely being odd earlier, but that seems to have discharged some as well. Okay, turning around here to the north. Is that I'm say just down there off our wing? So we'll bring her in past the mountain. We'll put her down and see how we fare. I like this. But I think when you're comp competing directly against the Simworks um, RV-14. Okay, it has a lot of the same features and functionality. There's obviously smaller cockpit, no room for a full GTN 750. That's a given. So the 650 inclusion is really nice. I like that option. Um, I would have... The, the canopy not being able to open is weird. Um, some things being able to be turned on and turned off in the air is a bit strange. That tie downs can be done, which, okay, if you can't select certain things you'd have to do from outside the plane in the air, fair enough. But why can I do tie downs? Am I hanging under the wing on the ropes? Um, some of the instruments are jumpy. The sticks animation seems actually kind of like it's missing a few FPS there. Definitely a few, short a few frames and side to side, maybe. Looks a little bit um, freeze frame animation. I can see the repeating the texture at the top there of that bar. So yeah, it says it's got 4K textures, but I don't genuinely feel like these represent 4K textures. I feel like they could have been more detail. It looks more like 1K on the interior, at least. Shadowing shading seems relatively normal, but... It does feel like it's absent somewhat in the design. We'll go downwind here, we'll turn around and we'll land, so we'll descend down here as we come. The glove box is nice, but it also feels superfluous because what does it do? And that popping up over there seems a bit odd. Okay. Close the glove box. Nothing odd happens there. Okay. Let's see what happens when we stall her, shall we? Let's power off stall here. Probably going to bite me, but we'll try it anyway. So I'm going to keep the controls held back. No rudder input. No yoke input. Okay, dives the nose. That was really abrupt as well. Interesting. I can already tell you I feel the price of this is definitely over the top. Um, it comes with a lot of the same sort of features as the Simworks Studios 14 in that you have working circuit breakers. There's the same kind of surface level playability and depth. You can fly it without any knowledge, without any experience, or you can fly it by the, the manual, technically. Um, but it's missing the two versions. They had the 14 and the 14A for a smaller for a cheaper price than this aircraft um, by about a third and I'd say the texture quality is better on the Simworks 14 by a good margin deliveries are a similar number okay 
but I'd say they look a bit better when they also take your own player's unit, num uh, unit number, tail number. Again, that's a bonus. Okay, we'll turn out here. Visibility is beautiful. There's definitely glitching in the control stick. And I would have expected slightly more FPS for something that's super optimized and quite basic, realistically, which I'm not getting. And I apparently need no flaps because I will just do a quick circle here. So I'm actually just about the right altitude for my approach. And I have got airspeed to kill at about 100 knots right now. So we'll bring around the circle here, a little bit of rudder. go. Perfect. A little bit of power here. So I'm bleeding off this speed. I've got no flaps in, by the way. We have a couple of stages of flaps. Switch down there on the below the throttle quadrant. So I'm power off here. And I have no flaps whatsoever. Yeah. Obviously the flaps would help slow me down, that would be a factor. You know what, I'll toss two notches of flaps in here. Actually act more as a speed brake than anything else. As I can already feel I'm going to be fast here. About 68 knots right now. Three points down. Yoke back. Flaps are up. Dragging the brakes here. Okay. We landed a bit late on the runway. We stopped relatively quickly. The flaps definitely have more benefit for drag than they do from lift. Because these are pretty large wings in terms of cord for the aircraft size. So short but decent cord. So they definitely got that uh, or depth. Is cord the right word? God, I have to go back to my textbooks now and remember... But they're a very chunky wing if you look outside there. I think the cord is the thickness. No, I've, I've got that one ass backwards. It's quite a large surface area of the wing. So we do get a decent lift. And it's definitely got that. That's going for it. It is aerobatically capable. Uh, seemed decently maneuverable. The RPM does, does bother me slightly. It seems off seems strange. The fact that I can't make full power is odd. I would expect to be able to redline it on the takeoff. And I did test this at sea level and I got the exact same result. It would not go anywhere near there. In fact, on takeoff, I was lucky to get 21,000 or 2100, I should say, on the RPM. So that's a weird one. Depends on what engine it fitted to this. It doesn't say anywhere, nor do they actually have any information because I couldn't find the manual. Uh, so high price, 24, four liveries again for, for that price for one variant. I would have expected quite a few more liveries and a few more interesting ones. Um, the texture quality in the cockpit could be better. There's definitely some instrument issues. I'm not 100% on all of those, but I can feel them being there. Things just seem a little bit off. And now I can open this one on the ground. Yeah, not being able to open that in the air feels odd. I know obviously in most cases you wouldn't, but to bail out you would, and can't do that. It's stuck in this thing once it's in the air. See, again, the texturing does look okay in certain places, it just doesn't look okay in others. Like even down there, there's a little nick or a scratch in the seat surface, which is a nice little detail to include. The modelling is well done. See, that bothers me. Everything else is, has been smooth so far. But that feels like I'm watching Jason and the Argonauts a little bit sometimes. Hmm. I want to like it. I don't think it's quite there. I think it needs a few updates to be ready. I think for the price, it is better to go for the SimWorks RV14. It just offers you more and it's a more polished overall product. Instrumentation's great. Uh, engine performance is good. The accuracy of flight modeling is good. This feels a bit floaty. It feels um, 
like the flaps don't really give you any lift, more just drag. And the engine performance seems odd. So not sure, but it's got potential. I just don't think it's there yet. 24 euros, I would not go for this one. Like I said, I would go for the Simworks option because I do believe if you want an RV, that would be it. If you want an aerobatic plane, there are other aerobatic aircraft. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.